Hey guys, it's Luke here with another Students of History unit preview. This time we're looking at the Reformation. Now this is a unit you might combine with the Renaissance for one Renaissance and Reformation unit. If you want to, definitely can. There's a test for you already made to do that. If not, and you want to split it up, that works too. So here are the lessons on the Protestant Reformation. You can see this is a seven day unit. That's based off of block classes. So if you teach, um, daily 45 minute classes. This could be about, you know, 14 classes or so, almost three weeks, two and a half weeks or so, depending on how you pace it out. But our pacing is already done for you here. Nice and simple. You're going to start off day one with a lesson on Martin Luther and the 95 Theses. There's a great uh, student 95 Theses where they come up with their problems of their school that makes for a great warm up or exit ticket. There's a reading on Martin Luther. You have two different, uh, based off of differentiation, kind of main focuses of the lesson. There's this nice simple one that breaks things down simply with an interactive notebook, uh, foldable style notes where they write down the problems inside the church, literally inside the notes, uh, um, the, do the church doors on their notebook. There's also a much more detailed and thorough uh, PowerPoint with guided notes or a flip classroom video with it all done for you. Uh, and got uh, Google Slides. Uh, it's up to you which you prefer. There's also um, some secondary source readings which really break things down simply on Martin Luther and others. Before we start analyzing resistance in day two, it's some awesome critical thinking interactive exercise where students read about either at stations or in groups different events from the Protestant Reformation, put themselves in that time period and think about how they would respond and how that might affect their family. You know, they read about some of these early reformers like Jan Hus uh, are being burned at the stake and what happens to some other reformers and kind of can you get on board with that and these changes or not? And as time goes on, how do they um, respond to these events? There's also a digital version that they can do digitally. I'll move over to one of the great characters in history, of course, Henry VIII uh, in, in England uh, for day three. There's a great PowerPoint and guided notes there. Also, in a, a flip classroom video lesson that you can use. There's an awesome primary source uh, letter that Anne Boleyn wrote uh, her, her husband, Henry VIII, uh, just before she was executed. As students analyze, they're also going to, there's a digital notebook activity there. There's a reading on his uh, six wives and the reason why he had so many marriages there, the creation of the Church of England there, a uh, big moment in the Protestant Reformation. Uh, day four, students are going to look at different denominations. There's some readings there to learn more about uh, how the Protestant Reformation branched off into these different denominations like Calvinism, obviously Anglicanism, Lutherans, etc., Anabaptists. And they'll also learn about the different beliefs between Protestants and Catholics with this little interactive dialogue. Day five, they look at the Counter-Reformation. Uh, after a short reading activity, there's an awesome uh, Counter-Reformation simulation activity where students work in groups as, uh, you know, imagining they were part of the Counter-Reformation and what changes might they make or recommend for the Catholic Church, if any, and why. Uh, day six is this awesome project a Reformation theme park project where they're going to make a uh, theme park and this could be done digitally online or it could be done on poster board or paper where kids are creating this imaginary theme park based off of different ideas of some of these uh, religions that branched off from the Counter-Reformation and it kind of helps them to understand some of these uh, uh, different denominations and beliefs and get to be really creative with that one. There's also some review activities there. There's a detailed unit packet with a, a review packet with a timeline and map activities and sources and images and uh, vocabulary. There's review games uh, online. There's review videos. Uh, there's fantastic resources to get your kids ready for that test. The test is editable. There's also a Google Forms version if you want to have the kids take the test online. And then you still have all the uh, digital resources in one place. If you have some kids that are, are learning online or you just want to uh, quickly find all the digital materials, they're in that distance learning hub at the end. However, they're all also linked in the lesson plans throughout. It's an awesome, awesome unit for you uh, to use in your middle school or high school world history classes. It's engaging, it has students thinking critically. It's also all done for you. The lesson plans are there. The pacing is there. All the engaging resources are there so you don't have to stress out about your 
your planning or your pacing or what you're going to do each day. You can just relax and focus on uh, teaching, which is, you know, why you got into the profession in the first place. Uh, if you have questions about this Reformation unit or any of the other ones, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out and uh, I'm happy to help you out. Uh, but thank you for checking it out. Thank you.